Hi, I'm Dave Henning with the Fresh Start Podcast, fresh ideas for business and personal growth. Today, my guest is Arman Ananian, and he is in Barcelona, Spain, coming to you live from across the pond, and I'm <laughs> on the Pacific coast. You have been in the business of marketing success with Facebook ads, and actually, a couple of people that I work with, I'm actually a client of uh, Frank Kern and uh, Grant Cardone, and you've been with some some of the biggest names in in marketing. I remember when uh, when Frank actually still had long hair and was <laughs> and was a, <laughs> and was a car salesman. <laughs> yeah, and a, sur- and a surfer, and uh, you know, beach laptop lifestyle. Yeah, and now it's everything changed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, fantastic communicator, uh, but nevertheless. With the advent of Facebook, in fact, I, I lived uh, in Mountain View right down the street from the Google Plex and right right up the road from Facebook. So I'm very familiar with, with a lot of that's going on, on there. But you have really built a career out of advertising, which I'm a big fan of advertising. I've been studying it going all the way back to the late 1800s and the early 1900s and then through the Madison Avenue days with the big players there. And I've got all the books and read them and stuff. So this is very fascinating for me to hear what you're going to share with us today. So let me just kind of shut up and say, welcome, Armand. Thank you so much. And uh, hey, I'm a super fan of uh, of in all advertising. Like I go and I, you know, watch old advertisements from the 50s or 40s. I love all this stuff too. Uh, how did you, uh, is that how you kind of got started just as a, as a child, really interested in, in seeing how things are, are done and how people say things? I've always found words very fascinating. Uh, for, yeah, for me, it was, you know, I, I got into advertising as a, almost a need because I was starting my online business in 2016 and I needed to advertise it. So I got into Facebook. At, at first, it sucked. Of course, you learn, you get better. But then eventually, you know, uh, you run other campaigns for yourself or events that I organize, et cetera, et cetera. And you get decent, but never uh, good, you could say. And then at some point, I, I, I had the opportunity to work with uh, uh, Grant Cardone and Frank Kern in their advertising agency. And that's, that's where I, you know, that's where I guess my knowledge really grew. Uh, tenfold because of all the high level people there and amount of clients, et cetera, et cetera. As Grant has always liked to say, you it sounds like you more than 10 X did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, that's hundred percent, hundred percent, 10 X did. By the way, here you go. <laughs> ah, yeah, see, yeah, there, there it is. But what what has been your most interesting experience with, you, you've worked with oh, more than 200 companies and uh, top level clients uh, of people of all sizes. So what has been your most interesting aha moment really that you, let's say made a, made a breakthrough and, and the shift that helped you to really understand Facebook and Facebook marketing. I, before you answer that question, it just r- ran in my mind that Facebook actually invited a bunch of us small business owners to come up to the campus and gave us some free classes on campus about wow. various things and how how they work on one of those all day deals where I was hanging out there at Facebook, and I think there might have been free food involved. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> absolutely. You gotta go when there's free food. So, no, to answer your question, uh, many takeaways. You know, like working with them for almost a year, uh, it, it was it was so insightful. Many things, uh, in terms of specifically advertising, one thing that comes to mind was uh, we were able to have a procedure like a car mechanic to understand where stuff is not working and fix it. So, And I talk about this in my uh, free ebook uh, that we can talk to people about. But it's, you know, um, where is the problem? Is it the ads? Is it the targeting? Is it the copy? Is it the headlines? Or it's after the click, as Frank Kern says, where it's, is it the funnel? Is it the offer? Is it, you know, uh, configuration of the funnel, copy on the funnel, whatever it is. So uh, we, you know, we develop really there like a, a, a very interesting framework to understand 
how can we improve? What can we do about it? And then number two, which I, I, you know, this was one of the most powerful insights was when we took something that worked in an industry and we put it into a totally new industry. And that was like eye-opening because it worked here, but in this other industry, no one did it before. So, so that really opened my eyes, like, oh my God, like, you know, it really is powerful to, you know, work with all these different niches because, you know, you learn from each one of them and you implement new stuff that is not on this other industry. Yeah. Well, a- as you know, having studied advertising as I have, that traditionally in the past, the old school concept was, you know, let's let's throw a bunch of money on television and radio and magazines. And there, w- and, there, and there wasn't really the data driven as it is now to be the mechanic to fix things up. But it was more like, let's, you know, throw, a, throw the old phrase, throw it against the wall and see what sticks kind of thing, rather than what you said, uh, the niche, niches, niches that really narrow down to a very specific target. Now, are you also, speaking of funnels, are you using the Russell Brunson type funnels associated with your advertising then? Is that what makes sense for you? Uh, we mainly focus on advertising. We can offer funnel services, but like our bread and butter is, you know, the advertising part. Tell me kind of some of the different types of businesses you mentioned, for example, that it, uh, what works over here will work with an entirely different type yeah. of business. So would that include, uh, you know, I'm passionate about because uh, I sold a ton of advertising of all different kinds and as well as bought a bunch of advertising, thousands of dollars worth of advertising for myself. So I, I've been through the cycle of, well, that didn't work. <laughs> all that to say, I've really been passionate about that big block of the, of the majority of, of uh, American businesses, you know, like n- over 90% are businesses with under 50 employees that are, that are in, in a lot of cases, you know, they just don't have time. They're busy running their business, right? So they don't really have time to mm-hmm. think about, well, how in the world does this social media stuff work and what should I do and where should I go? So that leads to a question, believe it or not, all my rambling and, and, and <laughs> sorry, but would those be some of the businesses you would work with? Like uh, I know HVAC companies or plumbers or people that have, that are out there, they're successful, they're doing well, but they need, they need that social media component. Can we say it that way? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we have, yeah, we have worked in, even in the uh, Cardone Kern agency, we've worked with HVAC. I don't know about plumbing, but yeah, definitely HVAC. And, you know, it's, it was all about lead generation and making sure that people call the leads immediately. So it's, okay, great. We generated the lead, but we, we need people calling immediately and saying, hey, uh, how can we help you, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, we have helped that those type of industries. We're now moving into, you know, high ticket, uh, you know, uh, coaches, consultants and stuff like that, training, uh, you know, where, you know, we can very quickly sell a lot of the high ticket packages that people get, you know, um, get way more than what we're charging for. for. Um, but to answer your question of the industry, let me bring in a specific example. Uh, real estate, here's how here's it works. So we brought up uh, a totally new funnel in the real estate uh, niche. Um, and it was, um, where was it? I think it was in New York. I think it was in New York. Uh, and, and what we did was a totally different funnel that realtors didn't do. Realtors did, you know, the average, uh, uh, you know, find out how, how much your home is worth, right? Everybody's doing that. And all these other things, you know, um, but nobody did this other funnel, which we take from, we took from another industry. And, and th- basically to, to, to recap, we were giving them something that nobody else gave them. In this case, it was a list of homes up below a certain, below a certain number, you know, that was considered affordable, you know? So all people, like we had so many people interested in that. Then they went, then we asked, hey, are you interested in selling, right? Uh, so buyers asking, we got buyers then, hey, are you interested in selling? So that was very interesting. That was a great example of, you know, what we were talking about. Uh, I see. I think what I was hearing you say was 
that the, the leads are coming in off of the Facebook ads to directly to the company, but that they really need to, to run with it and do all the callbacks for the leads as they're coming in. Is that the, how your, your, your advertising works? Yeah, you need to immediately follow up with the leads. They, you know, we were we are talking about you know every every minute, every ten minutes that passes that you're not reaching out. People forget that they even were on that site. Like for me, as a consumer, in, like in Facebook, using Facebook, Instagram, I I click on ads like twenty times a day, and you know within within a week, you I I don't even remember what I put my info into, and, and people are like that. People are even more like that, I think, than me, because people are, you know, like like exploring a, a more analytical. But I think, yeah, if you clicked on a hundred leads a week, you're not going to remember. So it would be great if you called immediately, or you know, having that system of calling immediately is almost as important, and sometimes even more than you know how you generate the leads. I see. This is this is a, uh, one of those obvious questions, but I'm sure there are clients that that perhaps do not. <laughs> fulfill that on their end and they're they're pumping money into in the advertising but uh how do you how do you coach the i know i had to when i had advertising clients i always had to coach them on you know tell your people who are at the cash registers if you've got this special going on you've got to tell them so that they know what's going on so how did you coach your how do you coach your clients to respond correctly to maximize their success that, that's a great question. We we have a process, you know, where we you know we teach them we teach them you know to again to immediately engage with the lead, but also uh, we want to build assets for them to pretty much do what you were saying in a digital way. So we help them create scripts for email follow ups, for email promotions, for content creation. So. That is pretty much what you're saying in just in the digital phase where, okay, you, you got to have a follow-up script of all the people that registered but didn't do anything. We're implementing this with our biggest client, a seven-day sequence. Hey, this is who we are. These are the frequently asked questions. This is what we stand for. This is what we do. Uh, you can call us at any time. So, you know, it's seven-day sequence. We didn't have that. And even if we increased from 5% conversion rate to 10% conversion rate, which is, doesn't seem like a lot, they are technically doubling their sales, right? Because we get all, all these leads, if you, of the same leads we're doing on Facebook, if you just go from 5% conversion rate to 10%, all of a sudden, you know, the same input generates double the output. So we are focusing on those type of things to, you know, to help our clients, yeah. So it's actually you're actually capable of generating between five and ten percent response rate. Am I hearing you right? That's that's actually possible. Response. So what what I mean by com, uh, conversion rate is out of the leads that we generate for this specific client, he closes only five percent, which is a bad number, but it's still very profitable. However, we want that number to be higher, quite higher. Sure. Right. Know it's possible. I could sell direct mail advertising and and cross your fingers that they got two and a half percent response. And it was just based on numbers. If you mail to 100,000 homes uh, twice a month, it was more, uh, you know, massive just to get something that that worked. So I like what you're saying is, is that, uh, you know, the old cliche, the fortune is in the follow up and the fact that that you are uh, building your email list and the, and you've got you've got a, a series of emails that educates so would you say that a lot of your marketing and advertising is is more it looks like it's more uh, educational for my clients or for me because it's kind of different uh well answer whatever you want to answer on that question <laughs> okay but yeah, so no, I think for my clients, it's more irrelevant. We do focus on more on educational, but our clients is, um, we have three phases of a person that interacts with our client's business. We have like, you know, cold phase, we have the warm phase when we have the hot phase, right? So we serve different types of content depending on which level they're at. If they're on cold, what we do is create uh, 
longer pieces of content that bring value to the person, okay? Uh, in the middle and on the bottom, it, it starts to be more of a pitch uh, about, hey, you know, this is what we got going on by now. Uh, so that's the structure in a, in, a, in a funnel type of way. Top, uh, we're educating, we're telling them, you know, a piece of advice, something or a frequently asked question or whatever. On the bottom, uh, on the and on the middle, on the bottom of the funnel, um, it's all about, hey, here's the benefits by now. Here's the sale by now. You know, here's this ex exclusive offer by now. So that's that's how we structure it for a client. Excellent, excellent. What makes you feel inspired and motivated? I think, you know, seeing, seeing, yeah, seeing my clients grow and employ more people. And a lot of our clients are also tied, and we are also tied to charities. We give, uh, uh, you know, we give a significant amount uh, to charities and it could be more, but uh, just seeing that if they grow, they're employing more people. And at the same time, they are donating more to charities. Uh, we got one, uh, one of our clients is, is planting a tree. We got a, a client feeding people, feeding hungry people. We got a client that uh, donated to youth programs locally. So, you know, just seeing the impact of, hey, they're hiring more people in the local community. They're also, um, they're also giving to charity. As, as I think you can tell we're very, I'm very passionate. I love seeing that. Oh, I, I love your passion. I'm this. I'm the same way. I think I'm helping. I'm on the board of of two or three uh, charities right now. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not just about the money. It's about making a difference. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And uh, it's not like <laughs> there are, I'm not going to take a hit on other industries, but you know there are some other industries where you're. Work is not tied directly to results. And we, every day, we got to prove that, hey, we got to prove why you're paying us, right? So uh, it's all about the impact. It's all about how much we're helping them, you know, generate more more revenue and, and hire more people. So, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, I love it because it's, it's a gift and a curse. It's like, okay, well, you got to deliver, great. But if you can deliver, you know, you're making you you're having like a direct impact on someone's life or business, and that's that's amazing. That's huge. That's huge. So tell me something that you think is true that almost nobody agrees with you about. Oh wow, that's a great question. Nobody has asked me that. Nobody has asked me that. Uh, I think. I think. Oh yeah, here's one. Here's one that, and it's related to privacy and advertising. Uh, I, you know, I think we don't care. So I don't, for me personally, I believe people shouldn't care about, or I don't care. But let me put it as an I. I don't care if Amazon or all these big companies know what I buy, uh, know what uh, stuff I'm interested in. But I don't, I don't want them to know, like, there is a limit to that. What, what, for example, I don't want them to know like medical stuff. I don't want them to know relationship stuff. I don't want them to know personal stuff, but I don't care if they know that I love buying plants all day. Like that's amazing. And people are so concerned about privacy, 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 uh, where, you know, it's actually beneficial if I'm, you know, I'm buying stuff of, uh, of, of, of Instagram that I didn't, I didn't like, it's making my life easier and I never saw before. And that's because I, we have given part of our data or all of our data right now to these services. And in exchange, we are getting stuff that is making our lives easier. Uh, if, and, and, and a lot of people are against, you know, uh, you know, privacy are against, you know, all this type of stuff. I believe that as long as there are some boundaries, you know, for example, uh, the Chinese government knows everything, period, all of their uh, people. The U.S. government, they cannot do that, right? But as long as there are some private stuff that they cannot never get access to and it's illegal, everything else about buying patterns, it's, it's just going to make your life easier. And people, I think, still don't believe that, most of them. Wow, that is an excellent answer, by the way. I've never heard anybody explain it that way. But I, uh, quite frankly, I agree. It's, it's, a, it's a part of life. And... 
It's not new. It, it existed way before uh, computers even. I mean, I, I remember that the, the Amazon of 100 years ago was the Sears catalog. <laughs> and you'd, you'd get this big, thick book at home and it had everything you ever wanted and you could order online and you go. That's how I bought my first guitar was, was this wow. Sears silver tone guitar, the same as some wow. thing, same as, uh, as Joe Walsh of the Eagles. Had, that was his first guitar ever was a Sears silver tone <laughs> guitar. And so yeah. but they track that stuff. They knew what you bought. And, you know, the, the, there wasn't email at that time, but they, they did have their, their catalog system, which is Amazon has replicated that all digitally, all, all that to say. Let me ask you this question. I really enjoy This is a very different question. So if you could have dinner with somebody that impacted your life in a positive way, uh, whether they are currently dead or alive, somebody from history or somebody recent if you could just have dinner and sit down with them and talk with, with that with that person or persons that really impacted your life for good who would that be uh i think um i you know i i here's uh my grandma you know my grandmas both my grandmas they were they were not uh you know by the time i was one year old two years old they were uh, unfortunately they they passed they were me so so my me growing up i i don't have grandmas and i always like didn't have that and just talking with them sitting down with each each one of them or one of them i don't care that's priceless to me because i we you know we don't keep you know 50 years ago we didn't keep pictures and videos as much as we do now and i you know i'd love to you know love to talk with her and really just you know get to know her more and i think that's the answer Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. There's there's something about family that is really precious. Uh, exactly. Well, how can I help you? Uh, do you have a website that you can share? And you mentioned that you can you have a, a book that you can share with our with our listeners as well. Absolutely. People can go to arevmedia.com slash ebook to get the free ebook. It's how to get exceptional results with your online advertising. And it's a step by step process on how to improve your ads. So very straightforward to follow. Uh, it will definitely help you make your ads better. Again, it's rfmedia.com slash ebook. And we can put the link. I can send you the link, Dave. Um, and then, yeah, people can, from there, they can reach out and see if they're interested and we can see if we can help them. Excellent. Excellent. I'm talking with Armin Ananian from all the way from Barcelona, Spain. And it's so great to have you with me. One last question that I love to ask because you, if you've listened to any of my stuff, I am amazed and I re keep repeating myself on this. When I ask this question, the unique things that people have done who are very successful people, uh, what was the very first job you ever had as a kid or a teenager? Wow, that's a, I, oh, <laughs> I need to think about this. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I, I pro I could be wrong. There might be one thing before, but the first thing was huh, the first thing. I think it was like sales. I think it was like cold calling people. Really? <laughs> yeah. how, how old do you, would you remember being doing that? That was 2015. So I was like, what? I was like. 17 17 yeah. 18 yeah something like that yeah but yeah. but you know like i had other side hustles but before that like i i bought bikes flipped them sold them for more so what is considered a job right <laughs> oh sure of course no i understand yeah some are paid unpaid volunteer things but it's just been you would be amazed the answers that i have gotten from what we now call influencers who are very successful but the first some of the first things they did was amazing like the like the kid when he was 10 years old decided to start a lemonade stand and his mother helped him squeeze the lemons and prepare to stick a table outside he's like 10 years old and he and he figured but he here's the here's the entrepreneurial mind of this guy he actually figured out 
when the garbage trucks were coming every week and we'd go out and that's back before the automated trucks like we have now be two guys hanging off the back of a truck and a driver. And so he would put his lemonade stand up. He had already researched at 10 years old, you know, when's my market coming by? And he would sell out by noon of, of lemonade. So I just love that. It's just interesting wow. uh, how, where that's we come so cool. from and, and how we, how we arrive at where we are today. It all, it's all connected somehow. Wouldn't you agree? Well, thank you so much, Armin, for being with me. This has been a pleasure and, and a treat, and uh, we will be, be glad to get the thank word you. out for you. Thank you for being with me. I'm speaking with Armin Ananian from Barcelona, Spain, and uh, thank you. I'm Dave Henning with the Fresh Start Podcast, fresh ideas for business and personal growth. Thank you. Thank you.